<laughs> we just haven't had enough sleep. Yeah. Right. Game time. No, show time. Hang on a minute. You haven't done. You haven't written my intro. Because you know it so well now. But I'm literally anchor man. You, you really have to it. write everything down. I haven't had time. <laughs> it's going to be a long <laughs> podcast. <laughs> In fact, you've only got like three sentences. Well, that's all you need for the intro. Have you put any work into this one? Oh, I've played the games. All right, I'll do. I'll do the honors. Welcome to the Naked Gaming Podcast with me, Lee Milner, and Chris Barrow. No, the- <laughs> very good. We did it. Great. Success. I tried to stop it there. That's it. You just want it to be with you, don't you? <laughs> it's been a little. It feels like it's been a while since we've done it because you weren't on the last podcast, the Lob Podcast. <laughs> you weren't on the last podcast because it was a Portal special. And I've been spending all my life changing over our, our internet to make the portal better, and it didn't work. So that's taken up most of my energy. I, I don't know about that. I think Theo takes Theo's up, taken my, up most of our energy. <laughs> most of our energy. Do you know we're actually recording this in Theo's nap time? Yeah, but it's dangerous because he's had two hours of this nap, and it, we're on, on the, the edge. edge. Living on the edge. He could wake up at any moment. And that'll be when the podcast ends. So it could yes. be a short one. So what have we got coming up? So lots of games have finally come out, and a lot of uh, sequels. Uh, Hades 2, which was one of the first games we ever reviewed, actually, Hades 1, and it went on to win all those awards. Uh, that was probably our first or second ever podcast. Dragon's Dogma 2, uh, there's a game called No Rest for the Wicked, and then because Helldivers 2 is already out, I've gone back to play Helldivers 1. <clears throat> I'm ready. No, 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 I'm ready. You're ready for your news. But I'm ready for my news. No, but this isn't. This is different where's, this time. Hang on. Wh- where's my news? Where's my news? Hang on. Where's Where's my papers? This is what you're like at work. Where, Why hasn't someone written where's me? Where's my cup of tea? My news. Where's my papers? Where's my script? Your script, if you look carefully, is following those links to talk about these so stories. Much sass today. So, so much sass. This is, they're all joined together. This is one big news story that I want to talk to you about. Mm. I mentioned this to you the other day and you were shocked. Yes. So there's a company called Valve, Steam, etc. You know, they yep. sell you games. Yeah. Uh, they've made some awesome games in the past. They say that if you die in real life, <laughs> you're not allowed to leave <laughs> your game account to somebody else in your will. Sorry, what? So... So all... All that progress. No, all the uncompleted games that you That's haven't what I mean. touched. That's what I mean, right? All all of that lovely library of stuff that you've got there sitting, waiting to be played, will never see the light of day. I love that. So someone who has the online username Delete12345 asked <laughs> Steam support if you could leave games to somebody via... I love that. Bequeath. Yeah. I love that, I love that, I love that good, word. Bequeath. Via a will. We're not allowed to bequeath them. And it says, we regret to inform you that your Steam account cannot be transferred via will. <laughs> 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 now, this is the, it's, oh. this is the interesting thing. So, I, sorry, what, sorry. Just, I could just imagine, right. Okay. It's, it's quite morbid, but, you know, you die. Right. right. And, and me, you want to play Mass Effect no, wait, Legendary. Yeah, yeah me and yeah. Theo sat there with the with the lawyer. I go, well, Chris left us the house. He left us Bailey the bunny. And he left us all of his... <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, which he never really played that and much. Then the, and then the lawyer goes, oh, I'm sorry, love. <laughs> you, can't, you, you, can't, you can't. You can have the house, yeah. but you can't, you have, can't the have the games. And the thing is, so, so someone, <laughs> I'm, I'm not suggesting to do this, but someone has said, but if you happen to know that person's login... <laughs> And password. Oh, what are the rules around that? Is anyone really going to come over and go, excuse me? But, Actually, you uh, do need to give me those just yeah, in case Just in case happens. I die. Yeah. No, because now I've said it on this. And if, if I'm continuing to be oh, online. Yeah. Oh, yes. Play offline, just saying. But no, it's, it's, it's an interesting <laughs> um, concept, isn't it? That, that Because in the old days, you'd have a CD and you could leave a CD to somebody. What is their reason for this? They just say computer says no. Computer says no. But why? Why not? Why? What's the harm in I this? I think it's supposed to be tied to you and you bought it for your personal use and for use on your account. What if though, right? You know, like on Facebook and Twitter and social media, you can actually leave your page to be run by someone like else. Like a legacy page. Right. So you, you 
I don't know if you know this, but you've been left in charge of my page. Not, <laughs> not that there's much on there. I've got something on Instagram for on your behalf <laughs> after you're dead. Funeral pics, lol. I've actually got a folder of saved Instagram photos Thank if you, you just want to keep them going. Well, I don't know how to but, do it, so. But why but why can't you do that? Why can't you tell Steam, you know, I make Chris Barrow the lead beneficiary of the of your Steam account. <laughs> well they say Steam support can't provide someone else with access to the account or merge I can. access to in another account. I well, can this, leave. And this look, this is where it gets interesting, but apparently it's in, in the Steam subscriber agreement. If you do give someone else your password, that's a violation. Go on, then what, what's, the, what's the punishment? It says you may not reveal, share, or otherwise allow others, otherwise allow others to use your, that's badly written, isn't it? Yeah. To use your password or account, except when it's authorised by Valve. Or what? What are you going to do? It's a violation of the confidentiality agreement. Yeah. Well, I'll be banished. I think from... you've, I think I, I mean, I'm surprised if you get legally taken it over, but you probably would get your account suspended if they found out. But it's like the, if they found out, I'm not saying do it so that they. No, not say do it. I'm just, I'm just questioning. I'm a journalist. Yeah, but they say that, that you're, you're contravening questions. your uh, right. agreement. All right. Well, just bear that in mind. Just bear that in mind that, you know, if you've got a good stash of games that need to be played and something unfortunate might happen. <laughs> Just have somebody in make mind. Sure, make sure you play those games. Make sure you play the games. But then, so then another report came out, and this is tied in with that. I uh, saw this in a number of places, but apparently Steam users have reportedly got $1.9 billion worth of unplayed games. I can imagine that. I'm probably part of that problem. It's the gaming backlog, obviously, we all call I mean, I've got a big list of games you, you that never I want to play. Like, I've literally got a list of about 10 games I need to play. But it's like, do I be a good mum? Or do or I do play, play my games? games? I mean, it's a hard it's a call. Ha- every morning I get up and think, <laughs> which one do I do? I think, what do I do? <laughs> well, so this is this is a, a team of people at something called PC Games N have done these numbers uh, and they work out uh, how much backlog certain percentage of users have and then how much that's wow, worth. Now, that's the, the only thing I'd say about this, yes, I mean I've probably got hundreds of pounds worth of games sitting there, but sometimes you buy a bundle of games, so you buy like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I want to play. Uh, I don't know. I've got Crash half, Bandicoot. Half, right, but you're getting all the other games but in I ain't the series. Play one and two again because I've done that, but I want to play play three and four. Right, but that, so it'll look like you've wasted money on one and two when actually it was just a bundle. So right. there's a little bit of that, but to be honest, I've bought games thinking I'll get to them because they're on a deal, and I haven't got to them yeah. even now. Yeah. They're sitting there waiting for I mean, me to tackle. You've bought me loads of games. I still haven't got round to you've them. You've just got Luigi's uh, Mansion 2, mm. and that's sitting on your Switch. I know. So don't you think that's amazing, though? $1.9 billion. Dollars. That's ri- that, and, and that's probably how game manufacturers get a lot of their money, you know. Well, convincing you to Easy buy the, money. the bundle, you know. You're paying over the odds for one game, and then you get the other ones for free, but you never use them. Do you think, right, now that we're out of lockdown and we've had you know, we've had the pandemic. Do you think people have time to play games anymore? Not like they did. No. And maybe those those games are sitting there from that period of time still. I know that some of mine are still. I mean, Rome Total War, am I really going to find time to play that now? No. Here's a question. And here's a question for you at home. Getting deep now. <laughs> going through this the microphone. deep voice. Yeah. Would you say you're busier... Than you were before the pandemic. Well, that's a good question. Regardless of having a baby, I'm just talking about ge- ah. just general life. Well, I think it's hard to say because of the baby, but I would say yes, because mm. everyone's hustling more because everything's so much this more expensive. Is it. This is it. But then that's why it's a good thing if you did stash off on games before and you've got them all sitting back. At least you don't have to pay ten times as much now. But you're thinking, oh, I'm actually saved like, myself yeah. money. <laughs> what well, it's funny, isn't it? You sit there thinking, I've saved myself money. Yeah. You know, if I buy, if you spend a hundred pounds yeah. and I buy a big bundle of games, yeah. I've saved money. But you have if I just bought you the because you're never going to play them. Right. And 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 it's and it's cost one point nine billion. <laughs> and that's just my account. <laughs> This is the best final story as well, just for this week. This These like, are great stories. This is, this is a really good one. And this one was brought to my attention by someone at work because they said, oh, you know the podcast you did last time about the PlayStation Portal and the saga that is first getting been a re- ordered. Yeah, yeah. this getting, has been uh, super, super popular though. Everyone's talking about it now because of you, I think. Yeah, that's it, obviously, because I finally got a Portal. And other people are finally getting hold of Portals as well for the PlayStation. So there's been a new update, which means that you're supposed to be able to now play your PlayStation portal like in McDonald's or whatever, or in the coffee shop, okay. or if you're on a, a Wi-Fi network. Okay. Or even at work, 
technically we but should hang on do- a minute you, you said it didn't, didn't even work well so a colleague of mine came down to fix something that was broken and while he was doing that fixing the studio was it the desk portal? no he said by the way the port the playstation portal update i've tried it and it doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> he said he managed to make it work in mcdonald's a bit but it was very laggy so to the point where he couldn't use it and he was trying to get it to work at work <laughs> it's bad <laughs> and uh, he said it couldn't didn't work at all so, so, uh, so does the portal actually work? It, it works for me at home, which is what it originally was supposed to do. Now with this new version 3 update, it's supposed to work when you go out and about. And I haven't tried it, but reports are that it's not doing what it should do. Explain this to me, right? This is what I don't get about the portal. So the whole point of it, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you can play your PS5 through the portal and yeah. you and it's kind of like... Your PS5 on the go. Uh, but it's not really on the go. It's just on a small screen in front of you, not dominating the main TV area in the room. So, like, if you have a one-year-old and you don't want to turn off Elemental, you can play the PlayStation, but Elemental can still play on the telly. Uh, so it's not massively useful. N- no, that's what... That's it's a, not like that's the Steam the Deck where you can play thinking. games offline away. I thought away. the whole point of this was that you could take your PS5 out with you. No. Well, oh. no, but this update means yeah, that you no, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work, so that's where we are at the so moment. So it's pretty pointless, really, isn't it? And and, and the funny thing is, why not just is, turn Elemental off and and play the PS Five? Because then Theo cries. But give him an iPad. <laughs> that's the solution. <laughs> and I should actually. You're right. I should have the right, big telly. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an adult <laughs> in theory. Stop kidding around, Snake. Do you want to do some reviews? Now, you're, you're actually currently playing Luigi's Mansion, so you, that's because you're into that, yeah. you haven't had time to play too much at no. the moment. I also want to mention Sensible Soccer 24, which has just come out in conjunction with the... Well, they've released it at the same time as the Euros football. I think, as you would. As you would. And it's if you remember, Sensible Soccer was that one where the graphics were super bad, but it was kind of like playing my first football game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. probably you played yeah. might have played it with your dad because yeah. I remember playing it with my brothers yeah. and it was it was quite jittery though. Well, Couldn't it was really just old much. school graphics and anyway, Sensible Soccer 24 is out and the graphics are slightly improved. Uh but it's available now if you're interested in a football game that's new. But forget that. I'll forget it. We're going back to the origins of this podcast. The sequel to Hades which won game of the year all the awards finally has been released in early access. This is Hades 2. Good. Not good enough. We can but learn. And the greatest teacher is out there. Now go. Death to Kronos. Death to Kronos. And I'm so excited uh, that I got sent it directly by... Greg Cassavin, who we interviewed all those no all way. those years ago. And I said, oh, you know, it would be great to be able to play Hades 2. And he went, here's four copies of it. Go and have fun. Wow. <laughs> Such a cool guy. And I have to say, so so it's a, like a hack and slash show. It's a, um, they call it like a rogue-like, where basically you go into a room, kill the baddies, go into another room, and it's all randomly generated. Right, okay. Uh, there's certain stop-off points on the way that are always the same, like you might... Uh, stop off and get a new bit of armor from a spider that's dangling from the ceiling, and right. then you go. On. It's all Greek mythology. I was just about to say, what's the genre? Hercules, Kronos, okay, cool. uh, all that sort of thing. Zeus, mm. Hades. It's all that kind of vibe. In the first game, you play as uh, a guy called Zagreus, who is the son of Hades. Okay. Uh, in this game, you play as a character. It's his sister called Melanoe. It's like it's like Greek housewives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. And actually, the best thing about this game has always been the voice acting and the story that, yes, you go through these um, you know, rooms and they can become a little bit repetitive, but every now and then they chuck in like a little special thing that happens. Like, every time you come back to life, you've got a little companion who says, oh, hey, how's it going? But like on the fifth time you die, the companion's not there. And you go, oh, oh where have they gone? And then on the tenth time, they come back where they give you a special something. You know, there's there's always little tweaks and bonuses that, that come round each time right. you die. Right. And you get more and more powerful and eventually you go and kill Kronos, the lord of time. God of time, I should say. Oh. The problem is slightly that it's not that different to Hades 1. It's got the same addictive gameplay. It's got the same kind of <clears throat> cool hack and slash weapons that you used in the first one. But like I say, if you didn't play Hades 1, 
just either start there or play this one. They're not really that different. That they're not Do really. Do they look any different? Are they better? No, it's very similar anything? graphically. The, which, the graphics were great in the first one, and this one's great. It runs super smoothly. Uh, this one's in early access, which means that they're doing updates all the time. But that was the same with the first game. They released that in early access, and it's it's so much fun. And that's why I've got to give it a nine out of ten. Even though there's nothing massively new, it's like a whole new set of voice actors, a whole new set of characters, but it's the same overall vibe. Right. So Hades 2 is out now. You can get it in early access on Steam. It's about 20 quid as well, so it's not that expensive for a game of which the first one won all the awards. I would have called it something different. Instead of Hades. Well, they can't call it Melanoe, No, wait, wait. Housewives of Mount Olympus. (laughs) Now it's a game called Dragon's Dogma 2. Mm-hmm. Have you played Dragon's Dogma 1? No. I have not also played <laughs> Dragon's Dogma 1. <laughs> it's thought, going well. So I played it and you're something called The Arisen. Right. Not The Risen, but The Arisen. Arisen. Imagine uh, like The Witcher and some of those RPG games, where, or, or even a bit like Harry Potter actually, where you're running around and there's a forest and there's companions. and It's a little bit of Game of Thrones vibe, which yes. was really cool. I okay. liked that. The story was very basic. It was kind of, you know, go and kill these baddies. Oh, sure, fine. Uh, you can choose from two races. You're either a human or a cat. Obviously, you pick the cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Obviously, you pick the cat. It also has a little bit of a Baldur's Gate style to it. I think it's probably a little bit off the, the back of the success of that with the story options and stuff. The combat's really cool. I liked it. Uh, you also have a little companion called a pawn. Yes. A pawn with you. <laughs> Uh, which or the character always gets stuck or dies or runs off a cliff or something. <laughs> so I'm sure that'll be updated eventually, but it, I don't know. Is that a little problem with the game? I just didn't... What it was, was it was very similar to a lot of other games, like Baldur's Gate, like a bit like Monster Hunter, just too much like a, a slightly less fun version of those games. Right. The frame rate was a little bit low. The combat was a fiddly, but but complicated, like in a, in a good I get way. Really, I get really annoyed when they make it too complicated. Like... Just simplicity is key. Yeah, and I think for a game like this, where there's sort of loads of talking and the lip syncing's not very good, and you know, I've been playing really old games recently, like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Skyrim. In those games, you know, some of them are 10, 20 years old. The lip syncing's better than yeah. in this game. They let them down on little things, and that makes all the all the difference, I think. However, it's worth saying that Dragon's Dogma is loved by a lot of people, especially if they like the first one. And for Capcom, who made the game. It's made them so much money that it's become a, a key player now in their like portfolio of games. So they do Resident Evil, stuff like that. Mm. Dragon's Dogma now for them, they, they will maybe, make more. Maybe it's something I might like then. Is it, is it, is it like Resident Evil or not? No, no it's got an aesthetic that's similar in a way, but it's much more like The Witcher, a, a long mm. RPG. And I just think for, for a game that is okay, I'm not going to be sinking 100 hours into it. And that's the problem. So what would you give it out of 10? It's like a, it's like a six out of 10 if you've not played the first one if you love the first one you may want to give this one a go you can get it now for around 40 pounds depending on where you look uh, there are deals on steam at the moment but it's available on all of the main platforms another game that was in early access actually no rest for the wicked uh, which is a pc release but also does work on steam and steam deck so it's true the king is dead We find ourselves in a place we never sought. The threat of anarchy swells beneath us. Done begging for scraps. We take what we need. A plague that spent a thousand years confined to stories is now clawing at our gate. Vegetables, it festive. Everything it touches is a punishment upon those who have lost their faith. You know how, like, at the beginning of a game, you create your character? Yeah. This had a character creator that cr- the standard body models looked like Gollum. Like, I was actually very scared of the character that I made. And I, I was a bit like, is this... Is everything... You get scared easily, though, Chris. Yeah, and I was like, is everything okay? Is this game been... Des-? But then, when the clothes go, and the armour go on your character, and then when the camera goes from the top down, it kind of makes a lot more sense. <laughs> but everyone's... When they start off, the first thing they're confronted with is what looks like a horrific 
character creator and you think, uh-oh, this is not going to be this a good not, game. This is not great. Um, I managed to play it on the Steam Deck. It's not really uh, optimised for that, but it was actually really good. Uh, it's from the people who made Ori. <gasps> What are they called? Will of the Wisp, love, probably, and something I of the love flame. I Ori. If you've never played Ori before, it's like... Mario, but on like the most beautiful... It's gorgeous to look at. It's very calming. I like games like that. It's a platformer, though, which is your vibe. You love My a vibe. I love a platformer, yeah. No, it's beautiful. So this is like that, is it? So it looks like it's that. It's made by the Ori people. The art, the art style is basically very similar. Right. Um, however, it's a top-down hack and slasher, more like Diablo, those kind of right, games. Right, yeah. Uh, again, funnily enough, a Game of Thrones-inspired story, very clearly. You almost could have taken a Game of Thrones episode... Car- ah. cartoonified the characters and that was the cutscene it seems as though we've got a bit of a, a trend going well minute. it's so popular a lot, of, a lot of games like that at the minute and season two of house of the dragon has just come out so you can understand why yeah people are get, they're, they're looking at what's being released yeah. you know um so it's like a 3d ori okay the combat's pretty tough like you will die if you get hit three or four times you've got to dodge and oh, parry another and book stuff bear with me. no but i actually i normally don't like it when games are too hard but it made me when I when I was going through and fighting and winning. It made me feel like I was quite skillful. You do that, yeah, yeah. Whereas instead of it just you know, like a lot of times these days, the, the the bad guys just part like the Red Sea. Yeah. And you think I'm over. I'm too powerful. No, no, I never think that, Chris. Like in Skyrim now, I'm playing Skyrim again. I'm nearly finished. Thank God. I'm enjoying it, but I've had enough now. Uh, <laughs> My arrows are so powerful that I can shoot a massive giant in one shot. That's my vibe. And he sort of like the giants then sort of fly across the map. Yep. It's yep, boring. That's what I like. no, I'm no, too no. good. No, that's no. Never say that. But anyway, this was a very, very, very good game. It's available in early access. Uh, it's going to be released uh, with co-op when it comes out fully, uh, and that should be a complete game changer. But that is out now, about thirty-five pounds on Steam, and you can also get it on Windows. It works on the Steam Deck pretty well, uh, and it's in early access. Okay, now it's time for Hell Divers, but th- the first Hell Divers. You have been busy, my friend. Of course. How many? When do you get to play all these games? Theo's naps. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh no. I think Is that him? I think he's waking up. Hang on. You review this. I'll go get the kid. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, go and calm him down. It's nap time's he might, over. He might join us for the end. Do you think? Yeah. You review. You review Helldivers. So Helldivers one. It's like everything that you love about Helldivers two. Uh, except it's a top-down kind of game, a little bit like No Rest of the Wicked that we've been talking about, or Hades 2. So there's definitely a theme to our games that we've been reviewing this month. It's my kind of game, though. Um, co-op is the emphasis. There are not The problem with it at the moment is that not loads of people are playing Helldivers 1. You've got a few hundred uh, playing on Steam, which is what I played it on. Um, but it makes you realise that Helldivers 2, the drop pods and the ships and the bad guys and the Illuminate, the, the third race alongside the robots and the insects, um, it's all there in the first game. And it makes you realise that actually Helldivers 2 is just a better version of Helldivers 1. Um, the camera means that you all have to be on the same screen, though, if you're playing co-op, which is a little bit annoying. I feel like it should have had a, a wider field or you should like in Helldivers 2, be able to wander off and do your own missions. Uh, It is fun when people join your game, so I enjoyed that. Uh, It's a little bit too easy when you start, but there's some fun to be had, to be honest with you. The sort of full mega edition is about 35 quid, so quite expensive if you're not a huge Helldivers fan. But I think it's a little diversion from playing Helldivers 2. If you've got some buddies that you want to go and play Helldivers 1 in, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, I think that in this day and age, it's probably a 6 out of 10, 7 out of 10 kind of game. But I think that when it was originally released, if you'd played it, it would have been definitely an 8 or 9 out of 10. Uh, But like I say, 35 quid, and you can still go and play online with people. That's available on PC and Steam. Who's this coming in now? The end of the podcast, Theo. Just timed it right. Yep. All the family to say goodbye to end the programme. Have you got anything else to add, Theo? We're going to go and play this afternoon, aren't we? Why don't you say your first words on the podcast? Say, Mama. <laughs> say, no, actually say, Dada. Say, Naked Gaming Podcast. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. Goodbye.